Hi, I'm Sasha Segan, Senior Manager of Public Relations from Qualcomm Technologies. You've been hearing a lot about ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, and other cool new generative AI applications. But when are they going to run on your phone, on your PC, or in your car? And why should they? I have the answers. This is on-device generative AI in plain English. Okay, so we've been putting AI chops into your devices for years. It's used to make your photos look better and to make sense of the wireless soup we're all swimming through. But what's just grabbed everyone's attention is large models which can turn words into pictures, words into sounds, or more especially, words into human-like responses. So far, most of that's happening in the cloud, because models like GPT-4 take massive amounts of processing, storage, and RAM, which you don't have at home. But that's changing. With Snapdragon processors, we're working on image generation on phones and PCs, and more of those on-device AI models are coming soon. You may be using ChatGPT or Copilot or whatever in the cloud, and you may say, that's fine. So why struggle to put it on device in the first place? Well, cloud services can get overwhelmed if they're too busy. Hey, Cloudy, make me a picture of a cat riding a unicorn. Coming right up, boss. Can I have one? Can I have one? Uh, can I have one? Can I have one? Wait. Ah! And, of course, they don't work if there's no connection. Hey, Cloudy. I locked myself in the basement. I need some help. I can't hear you. I can't hear you out here. Finally, cloud services cost money to use whether they pass that cost on to you or not. Asking your device can just be less expensive. Hey, Cloudy, can you write me a poem? Sure. That'll be a nickel. Organize my day? Yeah, that's another nickel. How about a cool birthday card illustration? Nickel. On-device AI fixes all of those things. It's reliable, it works anywhere, and you don't have to pay a cloud provider for every use. There are thousands of people all across the industry trying to put generative AI on phones and PCs. If you go out there onto the internet, you'll find a lot of projects involving small to mid-sized models, which are getting a lot better very fast. Here's what we're doing to push things forward. For one thing, we're working on new compilers. Any AI computation is like a dance where bits move around a stage that is the chip. If they move around in a beautiful, synchronized dance, the computation runs faster and uses less energy. A compiler choreographs the dance for computations going around our chips, and our compilers use advanced math to find the best paths. Quantizing is basically rounding. Many AI models use numbers at a very high level of precision, which take up a lot of space. But by rounding those numbers intelligently, you can greatly reduce the space that the model takes up and the time it takes to run, while only reducing accuracy by a very small amount. Finally, you have to run AI on the right hardware. Because AI processing involves doing many repetitive calculations simultaneously, it's not really suited to the CPUs in most computers, but it works better on graphics cards and even better on dedicated AI hardware. Snapdragon processors have dedicated AI blocks which run these specialized calculations considerably faster than the competition and use less power. At least that's true while I'm making this video. What does that end you up with? Well, we were talking to Cloudy. Now let's talk to Snapdragon. Hey, Snapdragon, this email from my boss is stressing me out. Can you reply telling her politely that I'm working on this project as hard as I can? No problem. I'll let you review it before anything goes out on the company network. And I see you're on a subway and the signal isn't great, so I'll send it when I find a connection. Hey, Snapdragon, I took a lot of videos of my kids' soccer game. Can you edit them together into a montage? But I don't want to share any of it online until I'm sure I like the result. I gotcha. Give me a second. Okay, 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 done. Now, Cloudy and Snapdragon don't have to be enemies. In the future, they're most likely to work together because they each have something that the other doesn't. The massive processing power of the cloud can run software that's too heavy for your phone, but your phone doesn't always need to be connected. Here's how they could theoretically work together in the future. Hey, Snapdragon, can you take some dictation and turn it into like a cool promotional video with like robots and stars and stuff? I'm good with the dictation, but that video creation is really heavy lifting, man. Hey, Cloudy, can you help me out over here? 
Yeah, no problem. Snapdragon, you take the dictation. I'll deal with the video. Hey, Cloudy, I'm out here driving, and I need you to put together an itinerary with some food stops and a good place to charge my electric car. Uh, uh, your bandwidth is really low. Where are you? Snapdragon, can you compress that request, send it to me, and then uncompress my response so that we can deal with this on this really low bandwidth connection? I gotcha. Uh, give me what you can, and we got it covered. So yeah, that's a lot, and it's going to change really fast. But by moving some of this AI onto your phone, your PC, and into your car, we're going to make AI more reliable, private, personal, and hopefully more useful to you. Thanks for watching, and keep an eye on Qualcomm Technologies all year as we announce our next steps to drive AI forward.